Welcome to lesson 39 of our interactive notes. We're looking at just part one right now. And we're adding mixed numbers using equivalent fractions. It's going to be pages 25 and 26. So here, our content objective for fourth grade and F numbers, operations, fractions, B, 3, C. I can add mixed numbers with like denominators. Now, next year you're going to deal with fractions that have unlike denominators, so they have different numbers in their denominator. But right now, we're just focusing on like denominators. They won't always be that way. And then for OA, operations and algebraic thinking, I can determine how reasonable my answer to addition problems are by using estimation. Language objective, I can use vocabulary related to fractions and addition to communicate how to add mixed numbers. Social objective, I can work with others to create models to prove the solution to the addition and mixed numbers, of mixed numbers, sorry. Okay, so first we're going to look at estimation with addition. Now it's different um, but similar to our estimation with whole numbers. But instead of rounding to going to a round number, we are going to go to the nearest whole number. And then we're just going to use mental math to add to the two whole numbers. So we're going to go back to thinking about those benchmark fractions. Whereas half is, if something's more than half, then we can go to the next number. Or if it's exactly half, we can go to the next whole number. If it's less than half, then we'll go down to the nearest whole number. So it's going to either stay the same whole number or go up one whole number. So similar to our rounding, but we don't need uh, any round numbers, no zeros at the end, just our whole number. So here, we're going to also add. Now go ahead and if you have a highlighter or a colored pencil or something, just a regular pencil, a different color pen, you could bring that out to use. I like the highlighter best because then it won't uh, uh, cause problems on the other side of our notes. So here what we're going to do is, first step, change each mixed number into a fraction. So here we need to change from our improper fraction, I'm sorry, our mixed number into an improper fraction. So I have two whole circles and one fourth. If I cut it up, so there's one, two, and then just one-fourth. There's my two and one-fourth. Well, two whole cut into four pieces each. Two times four is eight. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Plus the one piece we already have, we have nine. So our improper fraction would be 9 fourths. And then we're going to add 1 and 1 fourth. Well, what is that as an improper fraction? Well, we have one whole. And 1 fourth. Well, if we take that one whole and we cut it into four pieces, that's four, one, two, three, four, plus the one we already have is five. So we're going to change each mixed number into an improper fraction. So we're going to change it to nine-fourths and five-fourths. Then we're going to add these two fractions together, nine-fourths plus five-fourths 
Well, it's still cut into fourths, the size of the pieces didn't change. Each hole is cut into four pieces. How many pieces do I have? Well, 9 plus 5 is 14. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pieces. But we need to change this into a mixed number. How many fourths can I get out? Well, I can take at least one out. That would leave 10 if I took a four out. If I took a second four out, that would leave six. If I took another four out of six, that would leave two. Now I can't take any. So I took three groups of four, because three times four is 12. So I take 12 away from 14. I'm left with two. So I have one, two, three whole. And then if I put this over here with this one, then I have two fourths. So one, two, three whole and two fourths. Now let's look at that fraction though. This is correct, but is there anything I can divide both of these numbers by? Well, they are both even, so I can divide both by 2. So if I took this and I cut it into groups of 2, how many do I have? I have two groups and one shaded in. 3 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I could say 3 and a half. 3 and 2 fourths and 3 and a half are equivalent. Sometimes having that simplified form is better, but this is correct. Okay, so we're going to do another practice with it. So we're going to need to change these into the mixed numbers. It's hard to see the lines, sorry. These aren't looking equal. All right. So here we have two whole. And six sevenths. So that third one is almost full. Well, here, if I take the two whole and I cut them into seven pieces each, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen pieces. I take those fourteen pieces, so two times seven is fourteen. I add them to the pieces I already have. So fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And I get twenty pieces and each hole is cut up into seven. So each of these whole units is cut up into seven. And I have 20 of them. Okay, now this one. So one of my improper fractions is 20 sevenths. Then we have one hole. And three sevenths. Well, the one hole cut up into seven pieces is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I add them to the three I already have, eight, nine, ten. And I get ten sevenths. That's my other improper fraction. Now I need to add those two fractions together. Twenty plus ten is 30 sevenths. Okay, now I need to take that improper fraction and I need to put it back into mixed numbers. So how many groups of 7 can I get out of 30? 
Well, one group of seven would leave 23. A second group of seven would leave 16. A third group of seven would leave nine. A fourth group of seven would leave two. So I could get four sevens out because four times seven is 28. 30 take away that 28 is two pieces left over. So if what we're doing here is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to move it over here to fill this one in. So if you imagine like after a party with pizza and you have boxes and you have one piece left over, you can move a piece over to keep, make it whole. So we have one, two, three, four whole rectangles and then two out of seven left over is what we have. Four and two sevens. Is there anything we can divide both two and seven by other than one? No, they're actually both prime, so we can't simplify this anymore like we did over here. All right, so now that we've practiced adding and we talked about estimating, we're going to practice both. So here we're going to estimate. Seven eighths. Is that more than half? Well, half of eight is four, so four eighths. Seven eighths is more than half. So it's closer to having another whole. So instead of it being three, we're going to say it's four. That's the next whole number. Again, half of eight is four eighths. Five eighths is more, so it's closer to having another whole number. So instead of two, we have three. So our estimation, four plus three, is seven. It's going to be close to seven. Since both of them went up, this is going to be a high estimation, but it should be close to seven. Okay, so we need to take each of these and we're going to turn them each into their improper fraction. So here, 3 times 8 is 24 because it's the whole number times the denominator. And then we take that 24 and we add it to 7. And we get 31. So our improper fraction for this is 31 eighths. Okay, here our whole number times our denominator. 2 times 8 is 16. So we cut up into 16 pieces plus the 5, and we get 21. So our improper fraction is 21, and our denominator is so here we add 31 and 21. 1 plus 1 is 2, 3 plus 2 is 5. We get 52 eighths. And we want to think what can we, how many groups of 8 can we get out of 52? Six times eight is 48. More on the floor, go next door, regroup 10 more. 12, take away eight is four. I can't get a group of eight out of that, so that's our remainder. This is our quotient. So our improper fraction is six, remainder over divisor. Is there anything I can divide both four and eight by? Well, they are both even, so I could divide both by two, and I can divide both by four. So even though this is correct, we can write it in a simpler form, which may be more useful. So six whole, four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two, six and one half. Is that close to seven? Yeah, it is, so it is reasonable. Our next one. First, we're going to estimate. We have four six. Well, half our benchmark. Um, half of six would be three. So three six is half. Four fifths, four six is more than that. 
So this is closer to the next hole. So instead of 5, we're going to put 6. Again, half is 3, 6. 5, 6 is more, so it's closer to the next hole, which is 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. Now both of them went up to the next hole, so 10 is going to be high. It's going to be less than 10, but should be close to 10. I'm going to change each of these mixed numbers into their improper fractions. So first I'm going to take the whole number and multiply it to the denominator because it's going to cut each of those up into the six pieces. I get 30 pieces. I take those 30 pieces and add it to the four I already have and I get 34. So my improper fraction is 34 sixths. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take the three hole and cut up each up into six pieces, so I have 18 pieces. I'm going to take those 18 pieces, add it to the five I already have, and I get 23. So my improper fraction is 23, six. So I'm going to add 34 and 23. 4 plus 3 is 7, 3 plus 2 is 5. So I get 57 sixths. Now I need to convert it back to my improper fraction. So I need to see how many groups of 6 I can get out of 57. Well, 6 times 9 is 56. I'm sorry, 54. Common mistake, huh? 7, take away 4 is 3. I can't get another group of 6 out of 3, so that is our remainder. And 9 is our quotient. So it's our quotient is our whole number. It's how many groups of 6 I could get out. Six, 9 whole groups of 6. And I'm left with 3 my remainder over my divisor. So this is correct, but let's see if we can have a simpler form for that fraction. I can divide both of these by 3. So I still have 9 whole. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So 9 and a half. Is that close to 10? Yes it is. So that is reasonable. Remember, this is correct, but it's good to look for your simplest form because it can be u more useful with the smaller numbers. Okay, last one. We're going to estimate first. So our benchmark fraction of a half would be half of 4 is 2. So 2 fourths is half. 3 fourths is more than half, so that's closer to the next hole. So instead of 6, I put 7. Again, 3 fourths is more than 2 fourths, so it's closer to the next hole, which is 9. 7 plus 9 is 16. And again, both of them went up, so it's going to be a high estimate. Okay, I need to change each of these into improper fractions. So I'm going to cut each of these whole units into fourths. So 6 whole units cut into fourths, I have 24 pieces. I take those 24 pieces, I add it to the 3 I already have, and I have 27 pieces. So I have 27 fourths. Then here I have my 8 whole units, and I'm going to cut them up into fourths, and I get 32 of them. I take those 32 pieces, add it to the 3 I already have, and I have 35 pieces. Okay, my denominator is always fourths. I'm going to add my pieces together. 7 plus 5 is 12. 3, 4, 5, 6. So I get 62 fourths. I need to change this back into improper, I mean proper form, mixed numbers. 
Let's see, I can get a group 10 fours out of 60. And then let's see, five fours, five times four is 20. I have two, I can't get another group of four out of two, so that's my remainder. I add 10 plus five, I get 15. So my quotient of 15 is my whole number. Then it's my remainder over my divisor. Well, two and four are both even, so both of those can be divided by two. 15 and 2 fourths is correct, but let's see if we can simplify that fraction, get an equivalent fraction in lower terms. Two divided by two is one. Four divided by two is two. So I get 15 and a half. Is that close to 16? Yes, so it is reasonable. All right, now it's time to do more addition with mixed numbers in our three column notes.